Hello. In Mendel has built his philosophy on the basis of biology and evolution. That is why I was very interested to watch his video from a few days ago about DNA. Anyway, DNA I think will be the subject, but I really don't know where to go with this one. There's so many ways to take this DNA thing, this DNA thing that is so critical to what we are. While watching this video, many questions were raised in my head, but I want to ask him two main questions. Um, because change isn't diluted by a giant herd. Um, you can imagine if you had a, a four-year dog, if you bred that dog with a, a herd of a hundred other dogs, or you bred that dog with just two other dogs for the rest of its breeding cycles, that you're likely in the small three-dog circle of inbreeding to retain the four-eared phenomenon, where if it's breeding in the hundred-dog uh, tribe, it's going to get diluted out of existence. Has he ever heard of Gregor Mendel, a monk from Brno, Moravia, who in the middle of the 19th century made experiments with uh, different sorts of peas? He is the father of modern genetics. But even if he hadn't heard of Gregor Mendel, this is a sub-question to the first one, doesn't in Mendel think that just by logically thinking, he would know that a trait is not diluted in future generations, it is not blended because if that was true, we would all have an intermediate color hair between black hair and blonde hair, we would all look the same. Moreover, we would all be hermaphrodites because the characteristic of maleness and femaleness would be blended and uh, we, we would not have different characteristics. That is what his thought experiment with a four-eared dog tells me. It's just a predator-prey environment these balances between the two where organisms get into parasitic relationships where you know one shits on the other and it the other processes the shit and throws food back up to the other and to feeds this one and this one produces that thing and this one produces that thing and it's this whole cycle this whole circle of of life of ecology where they're all interdependent because they're all creating the environment they all have to live in um, but they are all in strict and harsh and brutal competition um, because anything at any time can change in such a way as nothing else can adapt to that change and it can very quickly dominate and take over and that's how evolution works. My second main question is has he read Richard Dawkins book The Selfish Gene or has he read only the title? Because he often says The Selfish Gene, The Selfish Gene but my question is, if he has read the book, wouldn't he know that by positing as the basic replicator a gene, Richard Dawkins was able to explain such characteristics of humans as altruism, care for others, self-sacrifice, in a better way, because if the basic replicator was an organism, if evolution acted on organisms, then when an organism has this trait for altruism, for self-sacrificing uh, for others, then that organism is gone and doesn't, uh, is more likely not to have descendants. So this trait will not go to future generations. But by uh, saying that the basic replicator on which evolution acts is the gene, Richard Dawkins was able, able to explain how uh, such traits can be passed to future generations. For example, if an uncle uh, self-sacrifices uh, himself for his nephews and nieces, then it is very likely that they would have parts of his genes and they would have this trait as well. So he is gone, he 
self sacrifices himself, but his nieces or nephews are very likely to have this trait and then they themselves to be altruistic and uh, self-sacrificing. And many other traits are explained in this way. Bye.